Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining this call. I hope your family and friends are all keeping safe, and I pray for their well-being. Amid rising cases of COVID-19, let us all continue to exercise greater caution. Coming, to, coming back to today's call, I have the pleasure of announcing a new member to the executive team, Mr. Balaji A.S., who will be taking over the role of CFO at Stowcraft Limited. Mr. Balaji is a chartered accountant and a cost accountant with over a decade of rich experience in finance, business excellence, process automation, and risk consulting. Mr. Balaji has a demonstrated history of working with private and publicly held companies in diverse industries, including FMCG, logistics, insurance, man manufacturing, and construction industries. His diversified and great deal of experience would help the company to achieve its vision and create wealth for its valuable stakeholders in the long run. This is an exciting time for Stowcraft with the recent announcement of our entry into electrical switches and accessory segment through the acquisition of business of Skava Electric Private Limited and our foray into branded modular kitchen segment. This is an important milestone in the company's growth journey for the next few years. Both these segments represent attractive market opportunity and will allow us to offer additional products with an attractive value proposition to our clients. Both these businesses will leverage key strengths that Stowcraft process, manufacturing expertise, strong brand recall for the Vision brand, and the Pan-India to India distribution network. We envisage to make additional investments in both these businesses to ramp up capacity as well as automate production lines. With acquisition of business of Skava Electric Private Limited, we will foray into the business of manufacturing low-voltage switchgrade solutions like electrical switches, sockets, distribution boards, switch boards, MCB, bulb holders, etc. As part of this acquisition, the founder of Skava will be appointed as the business head of this segment and will also observe the design, operation, and manufacturing team from Skava Electric Private Limited to kickstart the production. Acquisition was on a slum sale basis for a consideration of rupees 4 crores in cash, which is subject to due diligence and regulatory approach. This acquisition will act as a natural extension to our existing product offering of Vision LED. Kava enjoys a strong brand recall and has a wide distribution network in Tier 1 and Tier 2 cities in southern India and will supplement Southcraft's existing distribution network. In addition, we also are making an aggressive foray into the modular kitchen segment. Currently, this segment is highly unorganized, compromise, compromises of local carpenters, contractors, builders, small retail operators, and architects. The current addressable market for branded modular kitchen segment in India is estimated to be around 12,000 crores and expected to grow at a robust CAGR of 20%. We believe this is the right time for us to diversify and capture market share as the industry shifts from unorganized to organized. Our ready-to-assemble, the RTA kitchens, will be a standard offering catering to the majority of the kitchen shapes and dedicated modules of wall cabinets, floor cabinets, and tall units, along with multiple color options. The inventory of standard cabinets will be manufactured in mass production automated lines in, at an in-house facility in Bangalore, which has been acquired from Ms. Smith along with the entire team of operations and designers. This will allow the customers to benefit from assured quality, quick delivery, something like 48 hours of that, and affordable price derived from economies of scale. A pigeon RTA kitchen with plywood cabinets with a countertop, kitchen sink, chimney, cooktop, and accessories will be available to the consumers from April 2022 onwards at a delivered price starting at 69,990. It sounds exciting. Now I request the moderator to open the floor for question and answers. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Reminder to the participants, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 at this time.
The first question is from the line of Anirudha Joshi from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks. Thanks, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Sir, just want to understand in terms of modular kitchen means uh, it will be a similar business model to Asian Paints Slick. Is the understanding correct? So, our primary foray to the modular kitchen segment is derived with our experience that very long back in 2006, between 2006 and 10, we had created a, a system called RTA kitchens. These are ready to assemble standard modules of kitchens, which can be customized to the dimensions of the available space in the kitchen. But then these are standard modules. It's not like we design a kitchen based on the customer, uh, individual customer's requirement. These are mass produced different modules, which uh, are Lego, I mean, like Lego blocks assembled. So to form a kitchen that is not, uh, that looks like any other kitchen, but then these are produced in uh, mass volumes. Of course, we have multiple color choices. The difference between the kitchens that you are mentioning and these kitchens are, these are not individually customized, but these are uh, standard modules available. It is like, if you want to me to explain to you in a uh, simpler uh, understanding, it's like buying a, a ready-made uh, shirt or uh, getting a shirt customized. So it's like that. Okay, 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 understood. So, sir, uh, um, uh, what will be the initial investment in terms of branding, distribution, marketing uh, that we plan to invest in this uh, uh, new, new business model? So, we have acquired uh, a manufacturing facility from Medsmith along with the team that uh, that, uh, that has come at a, a very attractive price. We have only invested about 86 lakhs in this. And over and above this, okay. their uh, current uh, with the automation that we have planned and uh, real, I mean, uh, the shed that we are putting up within our premises. So we envisage about four to five crores of initial investment to kickstart the business. Marketing, we already have various channels which are getting to our uh, uh, in our business through the for the pigeon brand. We also have a Gilma brand which is uh, just, I mean we sell our products to EBOs uh, with the various channels that are existing. Uh, we we believe the business can kickstart and we'll explore uh, what you call EBO kind of a, a, a strategy for this uh, kitchen business. Apart from addressing it through the existing architects, the carpet. See, uh, the, even, for, even for the carpenter, it becomes very, uh, very attractive to offer a kitchen to his client by buying the modules from us and customizing it. So this business will evolve over time, but uh, initially it is, uh, we will uh, exploit the channels that we have. Okay, okay, understood. And so, lastly, on the new the acquisition that we have done, so as I understand, the product portfolio is slightly different from the kitchen portfolio that we are having, and it's more into the electrical. So, uh, uh, means uh, the company is diversifying into an another uh, business segment altogether. So, the in terms of the um, uh, investment or the management bandwidth, etc., that will uh, so. How is the management gearing up for that additional investment in a uh, very different set of business altogether? Or what the last like four years, in, uh, we've been investing our part. time, energy, efforts to build uh, the LED business, which is the electrical uh, side of the business. We have a parallel network apart from the other channels that are common, that is the modern retail and e-commerce. The general trade, uh, we have built a network across uh, 11, 12 states now. This is only complementing to the existing range of products. Of course, uh, when you compare it with the kitchen, this is a completely diversified uh, range of products. But uh, we have a network in the electrical business. Uh, primarily, it has started with our LED. It is a very, very fast-growing business for us. It has grown at a gagger of more than 50-60%, and it's, uh, it is continuing to grow. So we are able to build a distribution network in that. This range, the additional range of switches and the accessories that we discussed, a uh, part of the new acquisition, will only complement uh, the business in the existing uh, channels. There's no additional team required for this. Of course, we are, we are acquiring the design, the manufacturing team, the existing team of Strava Electric uh, Limited, added by uh, the promoter himself, who has a rich experience of 20 years. So that is the strength. On the investment side, I can say, of course, there will be some new uh, tooling apart from the existing range that uh, they already make. So definitely that is going to be there. But uh, the channel is ready already.
ओके ओके थैंक यू थैंक यू सर दिस इज हेल्पफुल आई विल जॉइन द क्यू नाउ थैंक यू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज फ्रॉम द लाइन ऑफ अचल लोहारे फ्रॉम जेएम फाइनेंशियल प्लीज गो अहेड uh yeah uh, good afternoon sir thank you for the opportunity uh my first question is uh, uh can you help us in terms of uh, you know uh, how many categories are we present in and uh, you know in the existing product uh, in the existing uh, uh, business and uh, you know how do you plan to kind of uh, uh, you know scale that in terms of you know is, is there any particular category which you think uh we can uh you know make it uh, uh, uh very large or it will be a broad based growth across the category so you are talking about the electrical line or you are existing uh, uh, kitchen related our, our existing kitchen business sir. yeah so no the existing kitchen business of course the, the kitchen itself an extension of our existing kitchen business though kitchen and the kitchen appliances don't sound to be the same but it is addressing the same consumers um there will there be additional channels uh, through which the kitchen we are introducing the kitchen but in our existing business that is uh, we have a long tail of small appliances where uh, if in the past i would have uh, uh, i would have mentioned this i will want to repeat it that uh, we are seeing that we get to leadership as and when we are indigenizing the products that we currently are importing when we make assembly lines we save a lot of money and we pass it on to the consumer then as we get scale we backward integrate into manufacturing these products we have been experiencing in any of the product lines that we are uh, currently doing that we are getting to leadership so but there is a very long tail of appliances that uh, we already deal with and there is innovation that is continuously happening so i can say uh, for the for the next few quarters that could be 8 10 quarters we have enough lined up and these are different products it is within the same uh, product category that we are offering to the consumers but today because we are also a me too trader uh, we don't have the edge that we can offer to our consumers in terms of value so but the moment we uh, get into manufacturing we are able to do that so we are continuously doing i can say every quarter you will see some product that from our existing range being uh, indigenized or indianized and then maybe initially only produced and then we backward integrate understood uh, is it possible to uh, give us some sense in terms of you know what new categories have we entered or introduced you know apart from led uh, in last 5 years and what would be their contribution now uh, where i'm coming from is that you know from the new um, ventures we are getting in what kind of scale up can one look at over next 3 to 5 years you know i'm not looking at really the short term but maybe 3 to 5 years time so i can say we will be able to get to in the electrical business along with our led we are aiming at 3% market share in the next 3 to 4 years and that is quite sizable we believe that it will be about 20 uh, it will contribute to about 20% of our revenue in the next 3 to 4 years the uh, the electrical segment itself uh, regarding the product if you want to know how it is scaled up i tell you about the recent part the three products that uh, in the last two years we have uh, done this process of what you call indianizing or producing and then backward integrating the choppers the electrical kettle and the induction cooktop these are categories that we are very proud of all these categories we are leaders in the category today okay so when you say leaders you mean you are number one in uh, induction cooktop yes. is it like yes we have okay okay um so you know i i presume these are the three sorry i'm hopping on this question because uh, you know that's uh, no 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 that's hey, question. feel free so, uh, so these uh, you know uh, these uh, products we have been uh, where uh, we were selling for a while right i mean we have indigenized and obviously we have scaled up but this we already had so what i also wanted to check the new categories or new products what we have launched apart from the led uh, is there any product and what would be their contribution no so in the led there are different types of led products so we started only with bulbs when we started off there were only four skus we used to have a, a 3579 uh, watts of bulbs alone and today we have a range from 0 to 50 in the bulbs alone then we have a range of batons that is what you call tube lights then we have down lighters and then we have uh, emergency bulbs and to also in the same channel we sell emergency lamps all these are i mean i can tell you we are growing upwards of 50% in the last 4 years 
uh, and we we believe that we can grow uh, much higher at a higher rate for the for the near term so uh, the new products that you are talking about is related to this whether it is switches or the mcb or the whatever in mean, the range of products that we are introducing the advantage is the the team the current the team that was currently handling the manufacturing and sales of this under the stava electric limited so last year they have done, i mean they were about 10 crores but uh, the company has gone through a little challenging time uh, two years uh, two years back they were about 30 crores of revenue so uh, with the capabilities that they had they are able to get there and i am sure with the additional uh, uh, strength that stocraft possesses whether it's manufacturing or uh, the network or the brand i think uh, definitely uh, it's a very uh, win winning proposition for us understood sorry i'm i'm just curious so you said 3% market share in or next 3 to 4 years for the electrical plus led right so you said 12000 uh, what's the market size of the switches switcher switch gates etc uh, so i'm i'm coming to the number is it like we are talking about upwards of 300 400 crores revenue from this uh, category so the 12000 was for the kitchen uh, business i mentioned and uh, I don't have an exact number, but uh, what in our mind is is about 15,000 crores, and we believe that if you want to get to that arithmetic mass today, the market uh, is about uh, if it is three percent, it's 500 crores. Okay, uh, understood. And sir, just last question, if I may, you know, with respect to, um, uh, you know, in terms of investments, you did, uh, you know, make a comment that uh, the existing will take care of that. Uh, would you require, uh, you know, further uh, capital infusion or, you know, um, investment in terms of the capital uh, expenditure, etc., uh, to grow these two business lines, or not really? You can. The company is generating enough cash every month. No, I, I, obviously, obviously, I, I don't deny that. What I'm trying to check is that, you know, would we look at like 40, 50 crores of incremental investment going into these? No, it does not require. See the. Fundamental uh, infrastructure for all this is already there. So, uh, I mean, because we are currently having the uh, enough space, real estate for uh, even the LED business, where we uh, we uh, were setting up the lines for the switches. So, there is no additional uh, on the shed side. Of course, there is some tooling uh, which will is a continuous process. So, it's not overnight, but uh, over the next three four years, there is a continuous investment on tooling. On the kitchen business, of course, we are setting up a new uh, shed and uh, we are moving these machines that uh, we have acquired from Metsmith. Along with this, we'll be adding some additional machines which will automate those lines and will be able to produce at a higher uh, rate. So that requires some more investment. Uh, for the kitchen business, I can say apart from what we have already paid, about 4-5 crores will go into the business, uh, investment. But uh, for uh, the electrical side, it is only the tooling because we have uh, all the electronic side, yeah, the I mean, making the PC boards or uh, injection molding, we have enough machines at the moment. Got it, got it. And just last question, in terms of new categories, are you looking at further new categories or this is good enough for the time being for next couple of years where you'll try and, uh, you know, build up on these categories before uh, adding further new categories? On the category side, I've already mentioned on the small appliances, we are continuously working on Indianizing, that is manufacturing and then uh, backward integrating. So that is a, a continuous activity. Apart from that, the kitchen and the electrical should keep the company, uh, company uh, very, very busy for the near future. Got it, sir. Thank you and wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants in the conference, please limit your questions to two per participant. Should you have a follow-up question, we would request you to rejoin the question queue. The next question is from the line of Kunal Shah from Carnelian Asset Management. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you for the opportunity, uh, Mr. Gandhi and Mr. Rajiv. Uh, I had a uh, few questions. So, first thing I wanted to understand is this Quava used to be about 30 crores kind of revenue two years back and uh, is now doing 10 crores. So, any particular reason for uh, the drop in the revenue and what kind of synergy is there uh, in the current distribution channel of LED for kitchen brand, which can uh, be exploited if you could help uh, understand uh, that a little bit on the Scava part? 
Yeah, so the pandemic has brought the challenges to many enterprises, and one of them could be Scala, Scala Electric Limited. Uh, though it's a private limited company, of course, uh, driven by a promoter, and there could have been challenges uh, managing the, uh, I mean, uh, the cash flows and all that. Uh, is also during these times, not every company could uh, uh, could uh, I mean they have gone through uh, challenges during these times. Several companies, and I can say mm -hmm. this company also was having those challenges. But uh, what we like with Scava was it is a very innovative uh, uh, a team, very energetic, innovative team who who have who have really created world class world, world class pro uh, products uh, with the limited resources that they had and. Uh, with the capability of Stovecraft in manufacturing and uh, the DNA of Stovecraft in cost, with the network of Stovecraft across the country and the brand vision, we thought that that makes a lot of synergy to um, scale up the business from wherever it is. The team, existing team, and uh, the merged team of Stovecraft, I think they become a very formidable force to do the vision that the company has for this business. So, what is the team size and the distribution, uh, the synergy that yeah, is 11 team? member, uh, 11 member team that we are acquiring from uh, uh, Scava. Okay, okay, okay. And just wanted to understand, sir, how would the margin profile be for this particular business? It would be margin equitable uh, to the existing uh, business that we do, or for uh, certain time frames since we'll be investing. Uh, in building this business no, uh, uh, from day one, but uh, the initial years of building years will may envisage a little more uh, expenditure versus the revenue. But uh, in the three years time, we believe that it will be at the same margins of the current business. Yeah, definitely, if not better, but it will be at the current level. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, fair enough. Sir, so, and just wanted to understand that this uh, modular uh, branded uh, segment, right? I mean, uh, there have been examples, peers, uh, which have not been able to uh, kind of, you know, scale up this business. Uh, as you also rightly mentioned that it is very much large organized and driven by carpenters and all of that. So, what is our right to win in this business segment? Because I understand the distribution channel also would be completely different uh, from what we have presently for our existing business of LED and it's an appliance. So, it's in a way a completely a different uh, way of uh, uh, selling products. Uh, uh, however, it would still be a part of kitchen, but the way how it gets sold or driven is completely different from uh, what we are presently doing, right? So, uh, two parts to this question. One was obviously the right to win and how we, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, try to uh, scale this business. Right? And second question is also, uh, we already have, uh, uh, you know, quite a few uh, things on our hands that, that is, uh, you know, building up a distribution channel other than e-commerce and south along with uh, product category expansion uh, lined up in the container segment and all, uh, right? And also this uh, electrical uh, the switch gear and all. So would it kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, be having too much on our plate to kind of uh, take care of? I mean, what are your management thoughts on these two uh, parts of this modular uh, branded kitchen segment? I don't know, address it in three. The first thing is we know the kitchen business. It's not new to us. In the year 2011-12, we were rationalizing several of our businesses and then we let go this kitchen business. The second thing is I think we were early in time then. But uh, the way we make uh, kitchens is not the way generally what it is already existing. I, I did explain to you about the shirt that is uh, a customized shirt versus a, a factory made uh, I mean, uh, on production lines, how you make a shirt. So a customized shirt, even at uh, a cost of 1,000 rupees, you may not be very sure of the quality of the stitching that you will get. But uh, a shirt that is built in the factory at 75 rupees, and definitely are assured of quality and all that. So that is the kind of uh, manufacturing that uh, we are planning or working on. So this is a ready offering. So there will be, it is like uh, having different... Uh, uh, 36 different modules readily available and from this we are picking and choosing so including the carpenters or the existing kitchen seller or our own uh, EBO stores or the online presence or even the modern retailers that we work with 
or the retailers that uh, sell our uh, appliances or uh, the cookware any of these people can be uh, participate in the selling of this kit okay 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 and this one last question on this particular business uh, mr shah may we request that you return to the question queue for sure sir sure, i will do that thank you thank you the next question is from the line of ashish upkan lawar from investki investment advisors please go ahead yeah <clears throat> thank you for the opportunity uh, sir uh, just had a question on the earlier cfo uh, not being there with you anymore so anything to share on i mean abrupt exit of that uh, dr prasad so i can't call this abrupt uh, so she was uh, uh, i can say really did all that he was supposed to do at stockcraft we really uh, uh, appreciate his contribution to the company so he came at a time when of course the company was going through recalibration of the business and all that and uh, we were also working on the ipo and then i think uh, we did a very successful both ipo and listing and uh, that was uh, that is what was uh, exciting for him and uh, he definitely as a professional believes that he can replicate this and do this uh, uh, in smaller companies and uh, contribute better than what he already did is what i think it's not that exactly i can share what is thought of this is what we have discussed i would uh, we should all appreciate that if as professionals if they are more excited with something better and if it is uh, good for their growth i don't think uh, it is wise to push them or emotionally bind them to stay back fortunately for us we also found one very young energetic uh, balaji uh, to replace him so i think this was a i mean then Yes, yeah, so the, the transition uh, to Mr. Balaji, the, there was a certain uh, common time that they spent together. Is it that way? Come back. Now the transition of the uh, because this is a very pretty important position in the management CFO. So the transition to Mr. Balaji, it was they worked together uh, for some common time. Is it? Uh, so both the while uh, uh, Sashi has already taken the role in the new company, he is available for this quarter. I mean that is his commitment to the company that uh, he would uh, want to see through the financials for this year, not as a professional, but uh, as being part of this company for uh, the years that we spent here. He is available there. Of course, there was uh, not an official run because Balaji also was serving uh, the previous company, but he would uh, definitely has got in hold of. There is a kind of a transition that has happened, not uh, not on. uh i mean professional uh, timelines clashing together but they are not uh, both at the same time hello several interactions when balaji, balaji was uh, i mean at the at the company's premises understanding the transition okay okay sir uh, one more thing i wanted to ask on this uh, new business so the kitchen business you mentioned something about the pricing that you are looking at i mean is, uh can you just elaborate more on this uh, just to give you a flavor of how aggressive we are on our uh, uh, offering of the kitchen it's a complete kitchen with the cook uh, with uh, the counter top with a sink with a chimney with a cook top and then the initial price range uh, can also start <laughs> as low as less than 70000 rupees delivered installed at the consumer's place okay and we have already done pilots for that in certain cities is it uh, uh i want to repeat that uh, we have a paid knowledge of the kitchen business between 2006 and 2011 we had uh, built this uh, system of rta and we are doing it well of course we were outsourcing then we are company was uh, relatively smaller and other thing a smaller market and we were a little early in time the, all the all these factors and more importantly when uh we wanted to rationalize our business because of challenging situations in those times one of the business that we let go was the kitchen otherwise you know the kitchen business okay so this will be a pan india kind of approach especially in kitchen yeah, start with uh, the markets closer to the factory at bangalore but uh, ultimately the plan is to be across the country sure thank you so much thank you The next question is from the line of Kalpit Narvekar from Alliance Global Investors. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, hello, sir. Am I audible? Yeah, yeah. Very clear. Hello. Thanks for taking. Thanks for taking my question, sir. Uh, uh, so, firstly, uh, I, I, I think I missed the uh, answer to this one. But what, 
are your expectations around the margin profile for this business? Is it the same range, seven twelve percent as uh, the? Yes, I think I think for uh, the company as a policy, we would we would want to protect the current levels of margin, and uh, we would then want to be as aggressive. So at the current levels, we are uh, in any segment of business that we are, we uh, for the consumer we are very aggressive. Okay, sir, and. Uh, could you uh, and and what uh, how does the capex requirements for this business look versus your current business is it so you don't need to do any additional capex is it i think uh, i can repeat uh, to get so, to the 3% market sorry to get to the 3% market share you don't need any additional capex no it's not that so we are investing on the kitchen business so we are setting up a new factory Uh, that is within the premises of Stokecraft, and then uh, we are adding some automated lines apart from the existing infrastructure that we have acquired from Mitch Smith. For uh, apart from the payment that we are making to acquire the business of Stava, there is uh, going to be continuous investment on on the tools, molds, and tools that we continuously continue to do. This is applicable to our existing business also, as and when we make new models, new molds, or to be invest. I mean, we keep on investing, so that uh, an ongoing capex is always there. But uh, relative to the size of business, is all very very small. Okay, sir. And uh, could you uh, could you uh, so you mentioned it's like one twenty billion uh, market or something, right? Twelve uh, thousand crores or something. So could you share some color on who are the uh, top few players and what is your strategy around pricing versus those players? Do you plan to price at a discount versus them or? What are your thoughts around that? So there are several players in this uh, segment. It's a very uh, uh, crowded uh, segment, but uh, we also have experienced this with our bulbs. Uh, we are growing at a bit, uh, at least four or five times the rate the industry is growing. So we believe that we have uh, different uh, capabilities which uh, which are difficult or better than uh, the industry. The three same capabilities that we believe we are good at manufacturing. So we uh, control our costs. We are we are good at distribution or creating network, and we are good with our brand. So all these three strengths are collectively unique to us. Maybe companies will have a strong brand, or companies may have strong manufacturing for a, or they have only distribution and no brand. All these, but all these three in one, I think, uh, is a very formidable force which can uh, uh, make any business successful. Of course, there could be discovery, learning in the uh, in the process that we do. But we are very confident of uh, coming up, I mean, overcoming any of those challenges. Thank you, Mr. Narvikar. May we request that you return to the question queue for follow-up questions. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Abhishek Maheshwari from Sky Ridge Wealth Management. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi, sir. Good evening, and uh, thank you for taking my questions. Am I audible? Yeah. Yeah. Please. Yeah. So uh, I have two questions. So this uh, a follow up on modular kitchens. So uh, is it? Uh, I'm assuming it's like IKEA, where you go to the showroom and you see customized uh, kitchens made, right? So won't this uh, business require to you to have retail space and you know show different varieties and dis- uh, designs of kitchens? So what's the plan for that? Uh, have you uh, rented a space to? You know, display those designs, or you know, is it a booklet or something like that? So to start with, we have our own 58 uh, Gilma stores where we want to display these kitchens. But uh, uh, we'll also work with uh, the various existing kitchen players in the market that includes carpenters. So these are uh, modules of kitchen which, when put together, we also have a back-end software which supports all this and the uh, strong CRM which will. Address any customer need, even remotely. The customer can uh, post his dimensions on, uh, I mean, uh, share the dimensions on our CRM, and then we will design some options of kitchens to them, and this can be delivered. We have a network of our own service uh, franchises or our own service technicians across the country who are being going to be trained on installing these kitchens, and within four to six hours, our own people will be able to install the kitchen. That is a kind of uh, uh, system that we want to uh, follow. Okay, so sir, on pilot basis, you plan to start in Bengaluru, and then you know, depending on the market response, you would gradually, you know, enter other cities. Right? 
yeah yeah something like this okay okay thank you sir yes, sir and my second question is uh, regarding your current demand scenario so we are hearing that a lot of players fmcg players and all are facing demand issues and all so are you facing a similar scenario or you know all good and good so i'll tell you the business itself we believe that uh, there are uh, there are seasonalities the second and third quarter are uh, a stronger quarters compared to the first and the last so compared to the years in the past we are we are seeing growth yeah okay. and uh, compared Sorry. to the similar quarters in the past we are seeing higher uh, i mean better demand than what uh, what we have been doing in the past so uh it is unfair to say that uh, there is a slow down in demand but if you will compare it with the second and fourth quarter obviously we don't see that the fourth quarter should be the same it has never historically been because the way the country works it is, the most of the festivals which is uh, sometimes driving the business is all uh, all fall in the second and fourth quarter and the so in general for you to take a price hike uh, like we had discussed uh, initially or uh, you know we had let go of that because yes we have taken a price hike from um, this quarter we have passed on a price hike okay so thank you i'll get back in the queue and i welcome mr balaji to the team thank you very much thank you the next question is from the line of binoy zariwala from sunidhi securities and finance limited please go ahead Yes, thank you for the opportunity. The question is on the Scava business. Um, it's just going through some brief uh, background of Scava, and I found that it was written that it was established as a JV of New Light Global Tech US in 2005. um so can you just help me with what was the background of scava and was since we've acquired this business on a some sale basis was the jv partner dormant or he was not keen on um buying out and scaling up this particular business so that is a very old history of course uh, the entrepreneur was a trader before he started in 2001 and uh, he was very uh, innovative in his approach and uh, of course the products that he built were again i tell you at a very premium uh, premium uh, uh, offering to the market so generally for uh, to build a market with a premium offering they require of course long term vision and uh, a lot of capital to uh, sustain the process of this growth and uh, that uh, that's a long time back technical arrangement that they had but now the business is on its own and is run by was run by the existing promoter whom uh, the arrangement is uh, that uh, we have bought this business and then the minimum time that he can will have to spend at sograph is four years to build the business and also uh, the opportunity for him to continue to grow with the company is there understood uh, and as a part of this transaction are we also acquiring any assets and liabilities so that's why it's there some a uh, slump sale sale so we are only acquire, acquiring assets and no liabilities we are acquiring the rights of the name, brand including the name of the company and all that but it is not the company uh, bio it is the business bio so uh, no no inventory no debtors nothing coming along with this debtors no inventory and no liabilities no bank liabilities no private liabilities Okay, and uh, as as on date, how does uh, Scava manufacture its product? Does it have a uh, small uh, plant of its own, or gets it manufactured from outside, or how does that work? So in this business, generally how it works, of course, they in the past had their own manufacturing facility. At some point of time, they outsourced the facility. But uh, how this works is uh, the molds and the designs belong to the brand or the company which uh, gets it manufactured. there will be a third party assembly line or third party molding facilities which uh, will do it for them so the current arrangement is like that but as stowcraft we always believe to control the end to end manufacturing we have enough uh, capability for assembling of course we have enough capability for molding and uh, all the molds or any assets that are there in the company uh, will all uh, including the uh, ipr rights and all that all will be transferred to stowcraft that's what and due diligence is exactly this so based on the whatever is on the balance sheet every uh, every uh, every investment in any capex that has been made will be transferred to stock 
understood understood and sir last couple of points uh, one is that i understand that this is uh, uh, synergistic to the pigeon led business and distribution channel but as on date how does discover sell its product is it more online does it have a distribution of its own and the last uh, question was uh, on a steady state basis uh, our ideology or the pricing ideology that we have of cost plus basis and having a margin of 33 to 35% gross margin uh, would it be also applied to this business yeah i think uh, fundamentally uh, we follow the fundamentals of this gross margin so that we continue of course there would be a little uh, incremental cost in the initial quarters but uh, very soon but we believe that uh, the business itself from day one will be profitable and uh, the uh, the uh, the channel that they currently have of course they have their own distribution channel is not as strong as uh, stockrap but they have their own channel and they also have an additional channel which uh, they excite the architects and the interior designers uh, so uh they generate lot of leads and demand uh, through this channel i think uh, we'll continue to have that channel also which will be additional over and above what stockrap currently has understood thanks a lot sir thank you all the best thank you the next question is from the line of rahul ranade from goldman sachs asset management please go ahead yeah hi sir thanks for the opportunity uh, just one quick question on the kitchen uh, modular kitchen uh, you know score just wanted to understand if this will also entail any exposure to developers for us in terms of the modular kitchen solution going into the you know under construction building before it is sold to the ultimate customer would that also be so we would uh, we would uh, explore all possibilities to reach the consumer through the developer Uh, ideally we would not want to directly deal with any uh, large scale developers we would want to engage with them wherever there is a possibility to sell to all the uh, retail consumers through this developer that is if they if there is a developer and he wants to make an offering to his consumers where uh, we can uh, build a kitchen for them it could be so there are several inquiries already that we have where you know there are large uh, large consumers uh, but individually we would be dealing with each of these consumers for us to deal with uh, large uh, builders i don't think that is attractive it does not excite us hmm. so so then it will go to the customer as a brand uh, as in the way why i want to ask is you want to kind of keep your own brand rather than it being just a solution through a developer and the absolutely. customer not knowing yeah yeah absolutely wherever uh, there is no question of doing un- any unbranded or any uh, third party or any Private labeling uh, for anybody. There's absolutely no no thoughts of that. I mean, those at the moment. It's purely to do with our pigeon and gilma brands. Got it. Got it. And, and as in the name of the brand, will it be uh, you know something different from pigeon? Will it be matchmade or just? Yeah, just... these are two different levels, and uh, so of course the appliances also in the gilma brand are different to the pigeon brand. They are at different levels. Yeah, yeah. So, so, uh, so suppose you are selling something from the Gilma stores, then it will have a different branding than you are right. Okay. Understood. All right. Thank you. I'll set that. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Abhimanyu Ola from GrowthX Capital. Please go ahead. Hi. Yeah. Uh, thanks for taking my question. Good evening. uh most of the questions i already answered i just had one question uh regarding your strategy in the electrical segment uh, are you also looking to expand into other segments say fan so uh, actually there are several segments which are no to uh, six do but uh, currently i tell you uh, that uh, we are very excited with the extension on the kitchen uh, within the kitchen and uh, the home where the small level for some crazy reason we are not excited with the fan business of course we believe that we can excel in any of the categories where the current peer group are at a higher margin to what we can offer and we don't want to get into a very highly uh, competitive market where we will have to dilute our margin so particularly the fan does not excite us particularly the business of fans but in the small appliances there are several uh, products that uh, we will continue to uh, keep on exploring manufacturing them which have already acquired scale in the country 
and wherever we can replace the imports in the country, we will continue to do that. Okay. And uh, would you be able to tell the uh, latest half year financial for Skava or that's not disclosed? Come back there, sorry. Can you tell us the turnover for the latest uh, half year for Skava Electric or is that? It is in the same range. They are not growing. They are at the same level uh, of last so year. Five, four, five, five crores. Yeah, yeah. Could be. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of VP Rajesh from Banyan Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thanks for the opportunity. Um, I have a couple of questions on the kitchen business. Uh, so you said you were earlier in that business for a long time. Um, so what has changed that prompted you to go back into that business? Um, and then the second question is you said there are a lot of competitors in that market. Um, so my question is, you know, why... Uh, no one has been able to scale up their business uh, so that they can be a clear market leader. Um, and what we need is differently to become a market leader in the crowded space. So I'd like to explain a little differently. The developed world, only, uh, I mean, it is only the branded kitchens that sell. If you, if you will uh, want to compare it with the US market or the European market. So we were a little early in time. In India, for some reason, whatever reason, uh, the comfort was with to get it done from uh, the known uh, carpenter. Both today, you have a challenge with the, the execution team uh, with the local carpenters. One, there is also a wide. Uh, I mean, it, it's a lot of uh, uh, you know. Today, there is a lot of uh, the experience in the consumer about the modular kitchen. So more and more uh, uh, families who are building their new kitchens are looking at that. And also, at the current uh, cost level that we want to uh, offer the kitchen, it becomes very, very attractive to acquire this kitchen rather than custom building. So all these are giving us uh, that uh, I mean, confidence of getting into this business. It's not that uh, uh, when we were doing this the business of kitchens, it was not that it was not very, uh, it was profitable even then. But there was a reason for us to consider rationalizing businesses. And so we chose to uh, uh, focus on business that we continue to do. This was always there. This, uh, this, in our opinion, now is the right time that we get into this segment. And uh, uh, only time can tell that when we'll be leaders. Because the, the kind of offering that we have, it is a little different. It is like a consumer product. It's not like a customized uh, 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 I mean, building on customized kitchen is like, I mean, uh, across the shelf you can design and buy. So maybe this morning if you decide uh, to build a kitchen, and maybe the next morning the kitchen is already installed. It's a kind of option. I see. Okay. And then the second question about the market leader currently, and you know, um, why have they not been able to scale up? If you can just throw some light on the industry dynamics. So, yeah, uh, the kitchen industry today is dominated by the global players, and their offerings are very, I uh, mean, at a different uh, level than what uh, we we want to do. So, uh, today, at this, in this segment, there is no player. We will be the initial, uh, we are replacing the carpenters, we are replacing the unorganized players, but uh, if, you, uh, if you ask me at the price point that we offer, there is no player today. So all the players like Heritage, et cetera, they are at the uh, super premium end and you are coming at the, uh, let's say, mid-level or lower mid-level. Is that the way to think about your uh, entry into this market? Uh, I think uh, we, I mean, we could not, it was not audible. Can you please repeat? I'm sorry. Is it better now? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I was saying that uh, you're saying there's no competitor in the price segment. Um, are you saying that because uh, multinational companies like Hetik, uh, they are at the top end and maybe super luxury, et cetera, and you are entering at uh, a price point which may be considered as, you know, the sort of mid-low end or something like that? I'm just trying to understand the industry dynamics. There's a huge difference. First of all, the names that you mentioned, they're not in the business of kitchens. They are supporting the kitchen industry. They make accessories for the kitchen, uh, uh, kitchen for manufacturing the kitchens. 
but uh, there are several companies at a different i mean uh, the price point could be different in the offering that we had i said that we can offer a kitchen at even 70000 rupees and this includes all appliances normally uh, the kitchens that uh, are sold as branded and uh, if they are offered by these uh, large players you don't even get the appliances at this price forget the kitchen i see Okay. And then on the Scava side, um, uh, what kind of incentives are you giving to the entrepreneurs so that you can really build this business within your uh, umbrella brand? Incentives for whom? Sorry, we, we, we lost you in between again. There was an echo. Yeah. Um, so you said the Scava entrepreneur will be with you for the next four years. And my question is that... Uh, what kind of incentives are you providing him to scale up this business within your um, company? Yeah, there is a there is a package that is uh, attractive enough for him to be a member of the Sokra family to head this business. Very aggressive plan that we have to head and build the business uh, on the plan that has been discussed. So definitely, uh, there's a uh, there's a very attractive plan for him. Okay, that thank you. That's all I any, of, any of the Sokra members, I think they are excited. With whatever uh, whatever they contribute and whatever uh, learning and uh, gain that they make, I, I, it will not be uh, possible for me to disclose the exact number. But it's like uh, for any business side, the kind of salaries that we offer or the kind of incentives, I can say it is as attractive as that. Thank you, Mr. Rajesh. May we request that you return to the question queue for follow-up questions. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pankit Shah from Denaro Wealth. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, Good afternoon. My question is, yeah, my question is uh, with regards to the industry size, what you mentioned that electrical switches and accessories is about 12,000 crore market size. And we are targeting some 3% in light next three, four years. So are we talking that the switches and accessories business this new Scava business will contribute say 350 crore over a period of three years. Yeah, that's what we believe. So currently, in a normal scenario, also Scava contributed say 30 crore like before three years. We are talking about scaling the business like 10 to 12x in next three years. So what are the levers there? I understand the distribution network we have through our LED business that will be used. What other things you think that are uh, will innovation, quality, variety, brand, and distribution? I'll repeat again: right. innovation, quality, price, brand, and distribution network. Right, right, right. So, uh, of course, distribution is already there. Brand is already there. Then, what stops us from getting it earlier? Are we being conservative then? In like next three years. I think is a very hypothetical question. I don't think anybody in this world can answer this question. Why right. was I not born when Mahatma Gandhi did not exist so that I could have got the independence for this country? Sorry. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Chirag Lodaya from ValueQuest Investment Advisors. Please go ahead. Mr. Lodaya, your line is in talk mode. Please go ahead with your question. Question about uh, Mick Smith. Uh, what Lodaya, exactly is it? We were not able to hear you, sir. Uh, please repeat your question. Thank you. Yeah, uh, is it audible now? Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah, so I just wanted to understand about Mick Smith. What exactly, you know, we have acquired by paying this 84 lakh and, you know, what is the current production capacity we have in that particular facility and if is there any past sales they would be doing in this business? No. So, it's a complete buyout of the complete infrastructure that was making uh, modular furniture, including the kitchen. Kitchen was not the main product for them. They were selling some products online and such, uh, like office, I mean, uh, some furniture, particularly in the pandemic period, they found a lot of advantage in selling the uh, office table kind of furniture and uh, similar. But our focus is on the kitchen, but this is the infrastructure is the same. 100% of the infrastructure uh, that includes all the machines, the team that includes, includes, includes the manufacturing of this, 
and also uh, the support from the promoter to build scale this business both in design and at the manufacturing there's a kind of commitment we have so we only acquired uh, their uh, what we call manufacturing complete manufacturing there's not if we can actually make kitchens even without adding anything but uh, what we are actually doing is we are making this uh, lines high speed lines so that we can produce in mass and then that can give economy of scale and that exactly is the the business proposition okay and that will be done in our existing facility or uh, in bangalore right uh, the this thing is we have the space we have enough land but we are building a new shed for this okay and will we be using this metsmith brand itself or it will be under pigeon no 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 it is under the pigeon and uh, metsmith only is a company name and they were kind of doing it unorganized but uh, uh these are being sold in under the pigeon and gilma brands okay and just lastly uh, how many electrical outlet you know we have currently in distribution for pigeon led we have 24000 outlets that we sell retail outlet uh, electrical outlet right yeah yeah they are all electrical out okay okay thank you and all the best thank you the next question is from the line of aditya mehta from gk capital please go ahead yeah hi sir thanks for the opportunity so most of the question has been answered my question is it is broad based so with regards to our consolidated business we have been given guidance of 20 to 25% growth per annum so with this with these two latest acquisitions so how does the growth trajectory changes for the consolidated business that 2000 crore revenue target which we have in mind will we be revising it to quite a little early then so it's not that we have paid you any exact number but we aspire to grow at 25% uh, growing by 20 at uh, 23 or 27% to 3% this way or that way i don't think uh, it really changes of course uh, this gives uh, additional uh, thrust to the overall growth of the company this adds to the growth of the company it is both opportunity to, uh, the current scenario all this will contribute mean that that the time that we are going to see in the future will contribute to the growth but with the current uh, scenario we are very confident that uh, the existing businesses can grow at 20, uh, 25% this can add additionally to the business so particularly when we are talking about that uh, electrical business being fine as growth that is a combination of our led and uh, all this so this actually it becomes a one vertical of our business we call this electrical now and uh, so the switches and all this will be part of that the kitchen business is part of our existing range of kitchen offerings that we do so uh, we believe that in the next 3 4 years uh, these uh, businesses will contribute to about uh, 20% of our business both this modular and uh, electrical combined 20% yeah, yeah the additional new business that we have acquired or we want to build will contribute to about 20% of our overall revenue okay okay that's it sir and all the best to you thank you the next question is from the line of binoy zariwala from sunidhi security and finance limited please go ahead Uh, just one question uh, on the kitchen modular kitchen business so you said that uh, along with uh, your skava business uh, in the distribution that they have currently uh, they have distribution from um, uh, they have tie ups with architects and uh, and developers as well so can you leverage that for the modular kitchen business is it possible i think uh, that is already in the plan that uh, the team that is uh, working with the architects is not that the architects by the influence the sales so they are kind of uh, influencers and uh, so the same team that is going to work with the architects and uh, interior designers will also work for the kitchens that is already in the plan understood and uh, rajendra ji the modular kitchen business uh, you said you will be under the brands of pigeon and gilma right you are right and uh, pigeon brand will not be sold via gilma stores that will be only gilma brand which will be stores in yeah yeah these are totally different level products and the offering the i mean the consumer segments are different we never sell a pigeon product in the gilma store and we don't sell gilma in the regular uh, general uh, general trade it is actually it's sold in exclusive outlets of gilma 
and the modular kitchen business also will uh, operate on a gm of 33 35% kind of is, is there another yeah, or different because uh, that is the guiding line for doing any business and uh, i think uh, we'll stick to this understood thank you so much sir thanks thank you ladies and gentlemen we'll take the last question from the line of devesh individual investor please go ahead Yeah, hi. Uh, most of my questions have been answered. Just, just some more of a transactional uh, information. Uh, any of these new business lines would they qualify for any of the PLI schemes or any plans around that? We already have uh, uh, a PLI for our LED business. The investments that we we are actually one of the approved uh, PLI uh, under the PLI. We are one of the approved uh, companies for the LED business. Got it. And and if you could just you know for a qualitative inference that you know you sort of called out that after three four years you would have about three uh, verticals right one is more around electrical and accessories second is currently the core kitchen appliances business and the third is probably you know this emerging set of uh, uh, modular kitchen and things like that right would that be a right way to look at the organization three years down the line? Yeah, I think uh, you're reading. exactly what we are thinking okay great thank you sir all the rest thank you ladies and gentlemen that was the last question for today i would now like to hand the conference over to mr rajendra gandhi for closing comments i thank each one of you for having participated in that uh, uh, very uh, interesting conversations that we have had i hope we are able to answer uh, many of your queries but if you still have any queries you can always reach out to our investment uh, investing relation pa- partners who are there now yeah. and uh, you can also reach out to our cfo of course is new a new member of the stoker family uh, thank you again for this evening very exciting discussion thank you ladies and gentlemen if you have any further questions please email at irfan.rain@linkintime.co.in On behalf of Orient Capital that concludes this conference